Quan Alexander was a no-brainer signing for the New York Jets this offseason. He's familiar with Robert Sulla and this scheme, and he also fills a huge hole that we have at linebacker. So let's break down the All-22 together, and I'll show you why he can be a significant role player for the Jets in 2022. Let's go. What's going on everybody, it's Luke here from Play Like a Jet, and today we're looking at another free agent addition in Quan Alexander, who came in late just before training camp, and it's one I'm really excited about. Fans have wanted this move throughout the last couple of months, and it finally came to fruition. So what does he offer the Jets and Robert Sala in 2022? What did he look like playing for the Saints last season? Well, let's start with the pass coverage, because that is the most important job for a linebacker in 2022 and this passing era of football. He's still got it in man coverage. Let's start with an example against Rob Gronkowski. Probably not a bad place to start. You can see from the linebacker position in between the hashes, the space that Quan Alexander, the island that he's on here, two-way go against Gronkowski. You're going to see Gronkowski throws this little fake whip route, continues to the left-hand side of the formation, and Quan is just all over him. Does a fantastic job staying tight, using the lead arm to knock the ball away, and forcing the incompletion. At the break of the route, you can see he doesn't fall for Gronk, who tries to sell this little uh, whip route, stays tight, disciplined with his square hips, and makes the PBA. A fantastic rep to start it in man coverage against a very good tight end. And this rep against the Saints was my favorite going through all of his 2021 tape. It's one thing to cover an aging, not quite as mobile and agile Gronkowski, but what about a guy like Russell Gage down the seam one-on-one? They're showing here a double A-gap blitz with both their linebackers, and they're going to bail out, and he's going to run right down the seam with Russell Gage, and look at him flip his hips, get his head back to the football, and influence the pass. He does a phenomenal job. Number one, just the athleticism to get out of that A-gap, to then find his guy in that bunch. That's a tricky formation to bail to, and then to be fluid in space and turn those hips. You can really see it from this back angle. You can see him bail here, Quan Alexander, number five. Look how he does a great job bending with the route, not letting it get over the top of him, turning his hips in his head and being in the ideal position. When this ball is getting to the uh, the wide receiver, Russell Gage, you can just see there's nowhere to go. Quan plays this perfectly. Man coverage in the middle of the field, be it against a tight end or in this instance, a wide receiver, he can still do this at a high level and that is the value for the New York Jets. An area the Jets have really struggled in over the last couple of seasons has been containing these pass-catching running backs and guys who can do things after the catch. Quan Alexander is going to step in and be the best linebacker for the Jets in those situations. Here against the Titans, he was phenomenal in pass coverage in this game. He comes from the weak side of the formation, so the left-hand side of your screen. Look at him wade through the traffic at full speed to get out to the flat and then make this athletic tackle outside his frame and prevent the first down. Just a phenomenal job. You can see the way he avoids this pick. A really nice job getting around it. Good field vision, good understanding of what the offense is trying to do. And then one-on-one -on -one with seven yards separating him and the running back. Look at the way he closes. He gets downhill and he makes an outstanding tackle. Yes, he gets some help, but Quan Alexander does a fantastic job wading through the traffic, having good instincts and vision, and then laying the tackle. Beautiful. From the same game, let's look at him covering a wheel route. Now, look, this isn't necessarily Quan Alexander's best job in coverage. He kind of loses touch at the stem of the route. But you can see him here coming from this stand-up outside linebacker position, showing a blitz. Gets pretty well attached, but just loses him here. Right now, I would say the running back's open. He just lost coverage, but does a good job keeping his head turned around, eyes on the football, and then plays through the hands of the running back. Look, I know it's a fair distance away, but what Quan does so well here at the high pointing of the football is play through the hands, force the incompletion, and he breaks it up and makes them kick the field goal. He does a good job in man situations on wheel routes. We saw him wading through traffic. In man coverage, Quan Alexander is going to be a huge upgrade for Gangrene. The last pass coverage rep I wanted to look at was against the Eagles, and it shows off his football IQ and how cerebral he is in space. Yes, he can cover in man, but his ability to identify concepts and then read and react is at a very high level still. 
So Quan's on the left-hand side of the formation here out of the three linebackers. You can see straight off this RPO at the mesh point, his eyes are in the backfield, but he starts to leak out because he understands the tendency and they like to run these little screens off the back of it. So he blows through the first receiver and then makes a tackle in the backfield. Does a great job because this play isn't over when he gets through that initial block. He still has to make an extremely athletic play. Again, tackling outside his frame and not missing it with an arm tackle. Does a fantastic job after having to leave his feet. But what strikes me the most is just how well he read and reacts. He identifies the play, eyes in the backfield, reading the mesh point, knowing what's coming, and doing that film study. Really nice from Quan Alexander. Now let's move across to looking at uh, Quan and what he offers in the running game because you can see him center of the screen, number five. He is a nightmare if you're running these outside zone concepts with so many teams in the NFL are running today, including the Jets, wide zone, outside zone. What Quan does so well here, he understands what's coming at him again. You've got the combo block on number 92 on the inside. He then wades through that linebacker coming to the second level, is able to redirect, to jump to the inside, but not lose containment of his gap and make a great tackle on Derrick Henry. I just thought that was an excellent example of what he offers. Outside zone, shooting gaps, reading blockers, very good in that regard. This play against the Carolina Panthers, this is just, again, an outside zone look. They're running it to the uh, right-hand side of their formation. What I liked about this from Quan was a feel for football, an understanding of how to read and react. Number one, all right, I've got past my block. I understand that the big dude here, the right guard's trying to block me. That's the guy who's accounting for me in the running game. We've beaten him. Now he's reading his own defensive tackle. He understands that his helmet is to the outside number 70. Look how it's on the left-hand side of his blocker. That means that gap is accounted for. The running back, if he reads it correctly, is going to cut back to the inside. So Quan understands, I can jump back inside to that A gap. Fantastic. Again, it's cerebral football. Understanding who's blocking me, beating him, and then reading your own blocker and shooting and making that tackle, that's really special, and I need that for the Jets because too many times the defensive line will penetrate, but no one's there to mop it up. This is a great job reading what was in front of him. So we've talked about the instincts and how good he is at identifying an outside zone concept or a wide receiver screen off an RPO look. But Quan Alexander can also be used as a weapon because of his raw speed and athleticism. This is an example of him run blitzing for the Saints against the Titans, a game he played astonishingly well in. And look at him just blow up this play. This is predetermined. This isn't read and react and diagnose. This is beat the left guard to the spot in this zone running look and just annihilate the running back. You can utilize him and deploy him in different ways and get creative with him because of his speed, because of the athleticism, and because of how well-rounded his game is. Great example of a run blitz. Show off that speed, shoot the gap, and make the four-yard tackle for loss. And the play we're going to finish looking at today is a sack he had against the Bucks. Came late in the game to really seal it and to bring Tom Brady down. A huge win for the Saints late in the season. He's over the center here. And what this shows off is everything we've talked about. It's patience, it's intelligence, it's explosiveness, and it's ability to bring people down and finish the play. You can see Quan doesn't want to sell that he's blitzing you. He's selling this as a contain. I'm containing, I'm eyes on Tom. He waits until the left guard has to make a decision to take the crashing defensive end. As soon as he makes that determination, you can see Quan shoots, does a great job swimming over the top, flying in the backfield and finishing the play. And that's the end of the game. Win for the New Orleans Saints. Patience, intelligence, identifying the right moment to attack and blitz. Quan Alexander has a ton of skills that can be utilized in a ton of ways. So guys, that's why I'm excited about the Quan Alexander signing. Look, is he going to come in and play at an all-pro or even pro bowl level? Probably not. But the skill set he has and what he can do in pass coverage, blitzing, and even some of his read and react skills in the running game are exactly what this football team needs. He plugs a huge hole, he knows this scheme, and I can't wait to see him on the field.